Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Wednesday, November 16th, 2016. Here's a quick look at what's coming up. Tonight, can you tell the difference between real racism and fake racism? It's not just the fake mainstream news. It's also comedy shows that are using ridicule as a weapon. You explain the millions and millions of people who do not watch this show, who actually like what they hear from Donald Trump and aren't taking messages and orders from us in the media, but they listen right. to what he says for themselves and vote for him. How do you explain that? Well, there, there are a lot of people who are racist. Saul Alinsky would be so proud. And can you tell the difference between real citizens and fake citizens? How about real and fake law enforcement? Denver joins the sanctuary cities that say they will not enforce immigration laws against foreigners here illegally. You know, illegal aliens. Then, the left applauds as social media begins censoring speech for anyone they label alt-right. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. If you watch late night comedy on television, chances are you've seen Donald Trump and his supporters portrayed as racist. Now, most of us know that that simply isn't true. Trump supporters come in all walks of life, and Donald Trump himself is not a racist. No, he is far from it. But the mainstream media and the Hollywood elite wants you to live in the land of make-believe. And I put together a quick video compilation of the real life racism that is rapidly spreading throughout the country right now. And I compare it to fictional, manufactured, and imaginary racism. Can you spot the difference? Let's take a look. The media has been saying some pretty negative things about Donald Trump. But what are real Americans saying? Why do I support Trump? Three words. Good at business. True, he is a racist. But for some of us, just being a racist, it isn't enough. I don't know what it is. I just like the guy. Don't just say that Trump is a racist, bigoted, sexist, totalitarian, and ignore all the bad parts in his platform. I do not know. Does he have any chance, do you think, in the race? Yeah, I'm sure. You think so? There's enough racists in this country for him to get elected. Yeah, that's a shame. <laughs> you voted Trump! You voted Trump! Oh, yeah! What do you say to the people who are who dragged a poor white guy out of a car and beat him? Oh, my goodness, poor Trump. white people, please. Oh, my, stop. Don't vote Trump. <laughs> Don't vote Trump! We can't just do rallies. We have to fight back. There will be casualties on both sides. There will be because people have to die to make a change in this yeah. world. I like that. <laughs> He's going to take our economy from here to here. How do you explain the millions and millions of people who do not watch this show, who actually like what they hear from Donald Trump and aren't taking messages and orders from us in the media, but they listen right. to what he says for themselves and vote for him? How do you explain that? Well, there, there are a lot of people who are racist. Oh, my God. <laughs> This girl comes up to me and she said, do you hate Mexicans? And I was like, no. And she said, you support Trump, you hate Mexicans. After the election, I was, I was going around consoling people. I said, guys, look on the bright side, look at this. I was telling everybody, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. I was like, I am certain this is not the first time we've elected a racist, sexist, homophobic president. This, this, he ain't the first one. He's just the first confirmed one. That's it. You motherfuckers, f all y'all. F all y'all. That's right. You, you, yes. You, 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 you. All y'all. Make America great again? I think you want to make America white again. This was a white lash. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president in part. And that's the part where the pain comes. Well, I'm you know, right back at you, my brother. Former member of the original Black Panther Party, Larry Pinkney, joins us now. And Larry, I wanted to get your take on the 
protests and the riots, anti-Trump riots, anti-Trump protests that are spreading throughout the country right now. And the mainstream media's narrative that it was angry white men that got Donald Trump elected. If I wasn't mistaken, it almost looks as if the mainstream media is trying to divide the nation. What do you think? Well, I think that's pretty obvious. Divide, uh, conquer, divide, divide, divide. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that it's it. They're not anti. Uh, first of all, the so-called protesters, what they are, is anti-democracy. See, it was okay as long as they thought that their person was going to quote unquote win, and that's the kind of democracy they like. But if the democracy turns out a different way then what do they do? They show that they're hypocrites, hypocrites, okay? Uh, there are people who voted for third party, there are people who voted for Trump, um, but the fact of the matter is, is they were exercising their constitutional right, and I am disgusted by the, the, the actions, which by the way, I think there's a hidden hand in there, the hidden hand of George Soros, the Absolutely. hidden hand Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and his henchmen and minions. Yeah. But you know, this 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 is disgusting. It's just utterly disgusting. These people, unfortunately, apparently, are a historical, a historical. No sense of history. Certainly, no sense of justice or of democracy. Well, and it's always the same. You hear the same thing from, from these guys nationwide. In fact, we're going to run a clip real quick here in a second. Our crew met up with anti-Trump protesters here in Austin just last week. And one of the guys confronted Joe Biggs, and he said if he voted for Trump, that he was a racist piece of, you know what? Let's take a look. <laughs> Let me get all that too. Right? Oh, yes. Yeah. How is he racist? How? Yeah. Trump. Do you see what Trump's doing? Do you see what he supports? Like, I don't even want to bother with y'all. No, no, I, I honestly, joke. I, I, honestly joke, hey, I honestly want to know. I honestly want to know. Get the fuck out of here, dude. I'm not, dude, this is a public street. This is a, this is a public street, man. This is, a, this is your problem, is that you don't want to talk to anyone. You just no assume point. everyone's There's no point. A, I'm not a racist. You, That's fucked up. You, I'm not racist. you got Trump in the office. I got Trump in the office. vote for Trump? I'm not here to talk about who voted for who. All I did was ask you why this you're about, here. This is about the presidency. Get the out of here if you don't. He's already president. You're not going to change it. I'm not, I'm not trying to change it. You're not going to change it. I know I'm not. He's a fucking president. Like, no shit. Fucking dumbass. So what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? We're protesting the fact that he's got fucking elected. Okay. All right. Like, no shit. So there you go. You can see right there how the mainstream media is able to brainwash these people into thinking Trump is something that he's not because he, you know, he never said that he hated Mexicans. He never said that he hates immigrants. He simply said he wants to stop illegal immigration. Am I right? Yeah. And, you know, I guess I would say illegal entry. Okay. Yeah. That's there's there's I... really no such thing as illegal immigration. Okay. And any country, any country would say, wait a minute, before you enter our country, you must do so under our rules. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. So that, that's my take on that. And as far as racism is concerned, did they ever hear Hillary Clinton talk, or Hillary as I call her, Hillary, uh, did, have they forgotten about Hillary's remark about black people as super predators? Have they forgotten that? Have they forgotten that she called anyone who basically didn't support her deplorable, a basket of deplorables? I mean, this is sick. And so, quite frankly, I have to put a lot of that responsibility first and foremost on the media but also on Hillary Clinton or Hillary Clinton, okay? Because she hasn't come out, repudiated that statement in such a way that people say, oops, 
We're making fools of ourselves and of this nation. Enough already. Enough already. Well, you're absolutely right. Now, I want to go over some statistics with you right now. It is estimated that there are 820,000 convicted criminals who are non-U.S. citizens living in the United States. And these are the drug smugglers, the rapists, and the murderers that Donald Trump was talking about. These are not guys that are guilty of parking violations, all right? These are dangerous criminals committing crimes against Americans. According to the 2010 Government Accountability Office, we have 55,000 illegal immigrants in federal prison. Almost 40% of the federal crimes in the U.S. were crimes committed by illegals. Uh, the cost of illegal immigration to uh, the American taxpayers is $113 billion every single year. Yet we have the Denver Police Department that is now saying publicly that they will not cooperate with Donald Trump's immigration enforcement. And Mayor Rahm Emanuel from Chicago says he is not willing to cooperate either. Chicago will always be a sanctuary city. And for more on that, we go to Margaret Howell, who is standing by. Hi, Darren. Hi, Larry. You know, that's absolutely right, Darren. And how dare they? We're talking about Denver Police Department. What Denver said was that they are not going to uh, be a part of the enforcement. What Chicago said in Rahm Emanuel, he's stonewalling uh, future president or President-elect Trump's uh, initiative to enforce the law. So you, you tell me what uh, can be done about that. It looks like during this press conference, uh, he said that the city status is a sanctuary city will remain intact forever. Uh, okay, well, there are a number of things that could happen here. Uh, President Trump could uh, withdraw any federal money going to Chicago. Uh, the National Guard is sent in to enforce federal policy when cities and states don't comply. Uh, who does he think he is? This it's, guy has got okay. to be the worst mayor in Chicago's Hands history. Chicago down. is imploding right now. Chicago is collapsing. They have one of the mm -hmm. highest murder rates, highest crime rates in America. American history, not even Chicago history, American history, worst mayor in American history. And he circumvents the law. He, st he snubs his nose. He's one incredibly, excuse me, allegedly corrupt political official. Uh, we could go into, we, we could spend an afternoon talking about uh, the corruption involving the Chicago mayor. Uh, I also want to point out Rahm Emanuel was a senior advisor at one time, very close ally to Barack Obama. Well, that tells you anything. well, big, big surprise, big surprise. <laughs> well, thanks, Margaret. I want to go back and get Larry sure. Pinckney's comments on that. So the, the mayors of these big cities across the nation are not cooperating. The Denver police say they will not cooperate. What do you think about all that? Well, it's very interesting to me that they're saying they're not going to cooperate with uh, President-elect Trump. Whether you like him, whether you don't, that's not the point. Because if the situation were reversed, okay, the first thing that these folks would be saying is, well, the law, the law this, the law that, okay? Uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, as the old saying goes. And I find it ironic, to say the very least, that uh, people such as the two individuals, Rahm Emanuel, Rahm Emanuel, by the way, who's an incredibly racist person, by the way, uh, he's playing politics, okay, bourgeois politics. And, you know, this is something that I think goes to the very core of our quote-unquote democracy in this country. Time will tell. Time will tell. And as far as the Denver Police Department is concerned, time will tell on them too. Because as Margaret mentioned, funds, federal funds. Remember what Obama did when he did his, uh, his little thing, his executive order, uh, saying that, you know, certain people uh, who felt that they were of a certain gender, even if they weren't, could, he said, he, do you remember what I'm talking about, Darren? Yes. Uh, yeah. About the schools? Mm -hmm. Okay. That they could go into the bathroom. The so bathrooms. I, mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. And I mean, you're talking, th this, this is absurd. It's almost beyond absurd. I mean, what has happened to our common sense? And people are just being played off. Duped. Duped. 
Well, and, and, I, and I think like mayors like Rahm Emanuel, they just want to keep everyone on the Democratic plantation. And so, that's that's what they're trying to do. This is not about a, a knocking on people's doors and ripping families apart. Donald Trump's going after the criminals. OK, these are the criminals who committed crimes against Americans in this country. They're, they're going to be deported immediately. That's what this is all about. And you talk about the establishment, and, and we've got a minute left, so I want to get your reaction on this real quick. But you and I both know that Donald Trump is anti-establishment, and it's always been the establishment who has tried to divide this country from the very beginning. You yourself, where you were very, um, uh, you took a very prominent role in the civil rights uh, activist in back in the 60s and they went after you COINTELPRO went after you because of your ability to unite people of all color tell us more about that that's right and you know they made it very clear that i had to be quote neutralized because of my ability to unify black white brown red yellow people okay against the establishment game and the same thing is happening but on a much much larger level. Again, whether people like or dislike or think they like or dislike uh, President or President-elect Trump is not the point. The point is stop being duped. Stop it. And once again, the establishment, as Dr. Paul Craig uh, Roberts pointed out in a recent article, the oligarchy is not dead. It's very much alive. The Clinton Foundation mafia is not dead. It's very much alive. George Soros and his activities, he's not dead. He's very much alive and active. Wake up, people. Black, white, brown, red, yellow. Wake up. There is an information warfare happening right now. It's a fight for our minds. And Infowars.com is on the front lines. Download our free multimedia app at Infowars.com forward slash app. It's free. It's on Droid. It's on Apple. You name it. Infowars.com forward slash app. Take action. Donald Trump has only been president-elect for eight days. It's still more than 64 days until he actually gets into office. But the same mainstream corporate media that lied to us throughout the campaign, that faked polls, that colluded uh, with the White House and Hillary to try to rig the debates, has now been caught in their biggest lies yet. And this video presentation, this special report, will absolutely destroy it. Exhibit A, the entire corporate dinosaur media, from the New York Times to the Washington Post, the London Guardian, are coming out and saying the campaign is imploding, that the transition team uh, is in total disarray, that everyone is involved in a mass exodus, that they can't hire the 4,000 people needed to take over the executive branch. When in truth, they're going in and purging the executive branch of lobbyists. The number one promise that Donald Trump gave to the American people that he would do as soon as he got into office. So it's not discord when Vice President-elect Mike Pence begins to kick the lobbyist out of the Republican Party. He's telling the henchmen of the special interest that have hijacked this nation, you're fired. You're fired. So the collaborator press that works with these multinationals that have hijacked our nation is desperate. They've doubled down on the whole race narrative, but Americans across the political spectrum, regardless of race, color, or creed, or religion, aren't buying it. They love the message of lower taxes and draining the swamp and restoring America's greatness. And Trump means to deliver. So now the new narrative across the board is he's incompetent. He's a joke. He doesn't have a transition team which really means he's kicking all the lobbyists out. So they're trying to then even withdraw support in Washington to make sure that the bureaucracy rebels against him. And that's why it's key for us to support Trump now more than ever, because we've sent him to Washington to do an incredibly dangerous, dirty job. And remember, no matter what Trump does, they're always going to spit it that it's bad. This is the first president in the last 60, 70 years I've seen 
that actually does what he says he's going to do by even restricting lobbyists or cutting them back. He is waging war on them. He is delivering in triplicate. So let's look at the facts and see who's really incompetent. We have the media that lied and said he would lose, that got caught giving all the questions to CNN and ABC News and the rest of it. That's all in the WikiLeaks, totally corrupt, trying to deceive the American people. And that same media tells us that Trump is incompetent when he just finished his latest DC hotel a year ahead of schedule and massively under budget. And he does that in every other major project he's been involved in. He's known for that. His father was known for that. Look at the energy we saw on the campaign trail. Look at the stamina, breaking all previous records, not just in how many trips he made or how many speeches he gave, but also in the amount of small donations from grassroots people. He is the true populist. Under budget, ahead of schedule. That's what this is. Under budget, ahead of schedule. Let's compare that with Obama. When he got into office, there was $2 trillion missing. And that was in the entire history of the Pentagon going back to the late 1940s. In less than eight years, it ballooned to $6.5 trillion in missing money. Trump under budget, ahead of schedule, Obama tripling the amount of money missing at the Pentagon when he was in office. Under budget, ahead of schedule. That's what this is. And the very same big banks and, and the Clintons behind Obama are the people that got rid of Glass-Steagall. They're the ones that allowed derivatives. They're the ones that basically engineered with the establishment Republicans the massive banker bailout that tagged tens of trillions more of private debt on to the American people. And those debts haven't even been paid back yet. Then let's not forget Obamacare, bipartisanly written by a bunch of central banks and giant multinational insurance companies by the very same establishment Republicans that opposed Donald Trump who worked with Obama to ram it through. If you like your doctor, you can keep it. It's going to cut your premiums to the cost of a telephone or cable bill. All of this was a sick joke admitted to be a fraud against the American people. And the main architect, Gruber, even bragged that Obama hired him to deceive the American people. So I guess in a way, it's not total incompetency. It's premeditated evil. But how are you liking the skyrocketing premiums? How are you liking the IRS fining you with penalties? How are you liking being raped by the so-called Democratic Party? You get a law which said healthy people are going to pay in it made explicit the healthy people pay and the sick people get money. It would not have passed. Okay? Just like the people, transparent, lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to get anything to pass. Now, juxtapose all that criminality, all that mismanagement, all that colluding, all that rigging with what the media is criticizing Trump with. Last week when he went to D.C. and met with Obama in Congress, he didn't tell the media that he was going to go back to New York. He broke protocol. He didn't let them boss him around and control what he did. But then it got worse. Last night, he went to his favorite steakhouse and didn't tell the media when he did it. This is just outrageous. This is so horrible what he did. He went to a steakhouse with his family. And of course, he got a standing ovation when he came into the packed restaurant that didn't even know he was coming. Oh, and on top of it, he then shook hands for an hour before he ate and promised folks that he was gonna be cutting their taxes, just like he promised me on the phone last week. And I've had the Washington Post, the New York Times, so much the old dinosaur media call me and say, what'd you talk about when you were on the phone with Trump? And I've said, you know what? It wasn't a private conversation, but I'm not going to share it with you because you're not real media. You're just using me as a prop. I told the New York Times this to act like you actually interviewed me. You want to spin and twist. But you know what? I will kind of rub it in and tell them some of the conversation. It was laughing at you and how much fun it was for Trump to ignore you and, 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 and not empower you when you're backstabbing traders that work for foreign banks that are trying to bring this country down. He's doing all this on purpose to show what a joke you are and then to watch you like toddlers throw giant fits. So again, he's continuing to outsmart all of you. And it's not just Alex Jones and Donald Trump that are laughing. Across the internet, folks are just absolutely loving the way he is trolling you stuck up conceited sycophantic traitorous 
joke level dirt bags <laughs> who still don't know why you lost the election. And of course, I'm just waiting for when Trump tries to take a vacation around Christmas, which I really think it's 70, he deserves. I mean, he is an Iron Man, but come on, you deserve to spend some time with your family. Wait, they're going to say it's horrible and he's lazy and bad, despite the fact Obama reportedly took almost five months of vacation a year on average. Truly unprecedented. Talk about incompetent. Talk about a lazy ass. Then we've got the EPA with one of the biggest spills in our history. They didn't even try to contain it for several weeks because I guess it's okay when the government dumps a bunch of cyanide into rivers. And while Obama was vacationing and Hillary was napping during the floods in Louisiana and Mississippi, who came and visited? Who donated massive amounts of money? Who went through more than a dozen towns and hand delivered the aid directly to the people? <gasps> That's right, the incompetent Donald J. Trump. Speaking of incompetence, we have the vaccine makers of this country who in the 1980s got Congress to pass a law shielding them from liability from their dangerous products. Well, Donald Trump has said vaccines should be investigated, that too many of them are being given, and that he is preparing for investigations into why so much autism is spreading across this country. Again, that's the opposite of the government giving immunity to the drug companies to dump this garbage on the streets. And thank God Donald Trump isn't incompetent and actually cares about America's children. Of course, we all know there's a little bit more than incompetency, and this is part of population control. But when you look at the billions and billions of dollars paid out secretly through the vaccine damage fund that the media tries to keep from the public. It lets you know that the press certainly is incompetent for not doing their job and exposing how deep this rabbit hole goes. But I need to be fair again. When Obama takes overseas vacations at taxpayers' expense, it's not incompetency, it's milking the slaves. I've got to admit it, I am enjoying watching the, the last dying gasp of the corporate media. Uh, it is amazing to see them scramble to try to figure out ways to get the public back on their side. Uh, one of their new initiatives is not just to say Donald Trump's incompetent or a racist. They're also saying fake news got him elected. Uh, when it's mainstream media that's been caught lying and getting us into these wars and claiming Saddam Hussein had WMDs when he didn't. Well, we are talking about Twitter shadow banning uh, innocent users, sometimes without their knowledge and consent. Stalin-like tactics, executing them digitally. I'm joined in-house by the Joe Biggs and on Skype, Brittany Pettibone. Brittany, for those of our uh, viewers who don't know you, tell us briefly what you've been tweeting, who you are, and why you think they've done this. Well, I've been tweeting mostly about, I've been tweeting a lot about the spirit cooking and the alleged pedophile ring involving some of our DC elites and politicians. And I also was tweeting a lot about the WikiLeaks articles. I've been working with a little team and we've been digging them up. And so I was tweeting a lot about those and I kind of realized it was about a week ago, suddenly my retweet count just dropped. It was cut to like a third or even less. And I was like, this is kind of weird. Maybe everyone left Twitter after the election. But then after two days or so, I researched shadow banning and figured out how to verify if you're being shadow banned and I was so and I still am so hopefully it doesn't last too much longer but um for people for people that are of similar views that might be tweeting how ca how can you figure out that this has happened to you is there something that you just type into google and the, then you realize oh my gosh this is me too uh yes yeah, so what you can do is search your name or your your handle uh, your Twitter handle in um, while being logged in and you should see that all of your tweets and the people who have mentioned you will show up. Then what you do is you log out, go back to Twitter, search your name. And if, you know, I did this and only like five tweets, only like five tweets popped up. So, and none of them were even mine. They were just people mentioning me from like October, 2013. So that means I've been shadow banned. They've also made it so many people can't retweet my tweets. And they've also unfollowed people, um, had people unfollow my account without their knowledge. So they're doing all sorts of things. <laughs> it sounds like a coup underway to silence uh, members of their, what they're calling the alt-right. Uh, mm -hmm. Something similar happened to our in-house reporter, Joe Biggs. And he has some tips uh, for people who kind of want to get around it. Uh, he has some, some very creative ways of, of going ahead and getting your tweets noticed. This happened to you too. Uh, well, uh, well, yesterday, let's go back to this whole people getting their, their accounts banned yesterday. So yesterday, from time to time, I honestly get on the SPLC. I'm always hopeful that maybe my name will be there one day. 
I, I would wear that as a badge of honor just because they are actually the real hate group. But I was on there and they had just opened up this new page how the alt-right was this new threat. Southern Poverty Law Center, yeah, for those Southern of you who don't know the acronym. Just really briefly, just to, because they're they're the group that uh, you know they're they're like good riddance to this. They they're probably the yeah. So yesterday I started making videos. I was like, screw you guys, and they they listed all these accounts. Well, later that day, throughout the evening, I go home and I'm making more videos, telling the SPLC to go screw off. And next thing you know, Baked Alaska, Mark Dice, everybody's calling me like, dude, all these accounts are getting dropped, and they were just dropping like flies. And it was the same people that were in a picture on SPLC that I'd seen earlier that day. And all those people got taken away. Uh, so it was interesting to see how that unfolded. And then, like you said, they tweeted out, you know, good riddance, bye-bye. So they definitely had a hand in that. They definitely communicated, I believe, with Twitter to get those people banned. But there are ways to get around if you notice that your count's going down. And I noticed this happening to me, too. I started groups on Twitter, uh, little uh, direct messages, DM groups, with other prominent people within the movement, so to say, that are verified or not verified. And what I do is I just send them a tweet and then I have them push it out if I notice it's not getting any attention like it normally does. And that usually helps bring traffic back to your site as well. So there are ways around it, but they are definitely doing it and they're doing it now since this. And it's funny, it's coming from the same people who are uh, always free speech. <laughs> yeah, always attacking us for spe uh, free speech. And now that Trump's won, they're all like, oh, where's my free speech at? And they're all wigging out right now and they're trying to shut us down because they know we're going to be the main voices to be heard. Well, Brittany, that, that has to be a badge of honor for you, first of all, to be shadow banned by Twitter. I know that you and your sister, Nicole, have been at the forefront of publishing uh, WikiLeaks uh, alleged uh, pedophile talk um, and these WikiLeaks emails. We have to say alleged uh, just to be careful of, of any suit. Uh, but do you think that that had a hand in it, just what you were publishing? You were, you were too good at uncovering things and putting things together. I know uh, it, was, it was said to me that you had a source, an anonymous even, that was that was kind of giving you hacked information do you think that that is why or did you just you know did you retweet southern poverty law and they just sort of you know go we, we've got to get rid of this girl no so actually after the last interview i did with you guys on election night uh, and we talked a lot about the spirit cooking and alleged pedophile ring there were some anons that that contacted me who had been aggregating all this information from WikiLeaks all over the internet, and they needed someone. They needed a source to put it through. So because most of them don't have Twitter, so I, you know, very readily volunteered because I'm I'm really you know um, dedicated to uncovering this whatever's there. So I said yes, and we've all been kind of working together. And there's some people on Gab as well. Um, I just actually really want to give a quick shout out to Gab for anyone who doesn't know. It is another social network, which is an alternative to Twitter, which is dedicated to free speech. And it's in beta testing right now, but um, there's a sign up, a sign up list. You can sign up now and get on, get on in a few days or weeks or so. And it is absolutely amazing. So I think that will be the new thing, especially if Twitter, you know, keeps going the way it's going, you know, censoring everyone. So we'll see. Uh, Joe, so for people who need an alternative or who've been banned or censored, well, first of all, we just want to highlight the fact that this happened to him. It's happened to Brittany, and there there isn't a lot of recourse people can do. Do you have any other recommendations? I mean, I've never heard of Gab personally. It sounds. Well, I actually interviewed the guy who created uh, Gab, Andrew, uh, maybe a month or two ago, uh, <laughs> when they were in their infancy, so to say, when he first started. And I'm actually a member on there as well. Um, Paul Joseph Watson, Milo's on there. Numbers of uh, people are using it. Uh, you know. It's going to pick up, you know, and once people see what's going on with Twitter and they're sick and tired of that and sick and tired of being censored, uh, I think they're going to move to that that avenue. You know, there's another thing that's happening, too, as well. You know, I have a verified account on Twitter. Uh, I'm not able to see any of my verified uh, notifications whatsoever. It's empty now. Um, it's happening to Baker, Alaska. It's happening to Mark Dice, to Paul Joseph Watson, uh, to Harlan Hill, who works for Fox News. Um, to Alex Jones's account, I looked at his yesterday. It's happening on that one as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're definitely attacking people who are very prominent in this alt right movement, so mm -hmm. to say. People who are, uh, you know, not libtards. Right, Brittany. Do you think this is going to stop you from uh, continuing the fight to uncover what's in WikiLeaks? You know, we, you and I and Owen. I remember this interview quite well on election night, where you uh, it was on the radio show, and you just began pounding in you know, what you were finding, and it's really horrific. And again, we have to say alleged because none of this has been uh, formally, uh, you know, there's no charge pending, but just mm -hmm. the, the content of these 
emails, if they're true, they're so disturbing. Every American uh, reading these emails should have a chill go down their spine, frankly. I mean, we're talking about high-level um, people in government, high-level people of uh, Clinton's camp that were allegedly involved in something incredibly dark, incredibly sinister. Is this going to stop you from doing it, or are you just going to, is it, is it spurred you on to, to keep going with new, new, new vigor here? Yeah, that's the thing, and, and I hope the left will still understand that, that the more you try and censor us, the louder we're going to get. I mean, there's this saying, it's nothing as, you know, as powerful as an idea whose time has come. And that's basically what a lot of these people who are getting censored are. It's their ideas. The left has bad ideas. I don't know if they realize that yet or not, but even with all of the, you know, um, promotion and all the big people they have behind them pushing these things, they're just dying in the water. You know, like Twitter does, I know, I believe they have a list of accounts that they just watch for the same people who, who restart an account. For example, Ricky Vaughn is one of the main ones. He's been banned like five times, but he just keeps coming back and there are people that love him and they're not going to be able to stop them, him. They're not going to be able to stop me, none of us. So, yes, I'm actually still putting together all of this, you know, alleged pedophile information. I'm trying to aggregate it all into one large case, and then I want to put it out just because it'll be more, you know, solid and people will be able to digest it easier rather than just giving people pieces, you know, here and there. I want to give them the full picture, simplified, and just present it to them, you know, not in an accusing way, but just more like, this is what we found, what do you think? You know, and you you determine its legitimacy, essentially. Twitter rules, they say that they prohibit the targeting and abuse of harassment, and we will suspend accounts that violate this policy. You know, I am a fan of, of your Twitter account. I'm on it every day. I certainly look at this guy's account. I, you know, abuse is a very subjective word. Joe, no abuse underway whatsoever. He's got a little bit of an agitator's heart, but we're, we're, ta we're not talking about abuse of a, or a violation of a policy here. That's the bottom line. 10 seconds. Twitter, Twitter is a sponge full of liberal tears, and I'm just here to squeeze it. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, it was such an honor to be with you, you and your sister as well. Uh, keep this up, this amazing work. Join us on our website for more information about this, Infowars.com. I'm Margaret Hell, joined by Joe Biggs. This is a protest. And this is a riot. If you can't tell the difference, then you are part of the problem. Folks, George Soros is a major player in geopolitical markets. This is a man that most people had never heard of until this most recent presidential election. And many people probably still don't know who he is. And we can tie him directly to the Clinton campaign, not just with the WikiLeaks emails, but also large donations that he has made to the Clinton campaign and the Clinton Foundation. He can also be responsible for the Arab Spring Revolution. He has injected millions of dollars into Occupy Wall Street, Black Lives Matter, and MoveOn.org. This is a man that has some serious leverage, some serious money, and some serious agendas. Now, he was on 60 Minutes in 1998. This is a quote-unquote long-lost interview Alex Jones references it a lot. We're going to go through some of the major highlights from that interview and try to break down who George Soros really is. In the last two years, you've been blamed for financial collapse of Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Japan, and Russia. Yeah, uh, all, of the, all of the above. Uh, all of the above. Yeah. Did you see the pride he had in that? What type of individual takes pride and gets a rise out of the fact that he's being called out for collapsing financial markets, collapsing economies, leading to many people starving, homeless, on the streets, and he's up there laughing, bragging about it. This is a sick individual. I think that uh, I've been blamed, blamed for everything. I am basically there to, uh, um, to make money. I cannot and do not look at the social consequences of, of what I do. Does not look at the social consequences of what he does. He says he's in it to make money. Of course, he's talking about his hedge fund management, which we'll get into more in a second. But obviously, he doesn't care about the social consequences. Look at the trouble that's come from the movements that he's funded, from the Arab Spring to what happened at the Ukrainian and Russian border to what's happening here in the United States with Black Lives Matter. This is a man who is trying to foment civil unrest after the Dayton Peace Agreements in Bosnia in 1995, for, for a considerable period of time, George had given more money 
to implement the peace agreements than the U.S. government had. He just could move that fast. So you need to think about this. This is an individual, a big international banker, who apparently has more power, more negotiating leverage than the United States government, more influence than the United States government and we the people. Think about that, folks. That's one man, George Soros, with more influence than the entire United States government. Whatever you think about that is up to you, but that's what went on. As a, as a competitor, I've got to compete to win. As a human being, I, can, I, I am concerned about the society in which I live. Which George Soros am I talking to now? The amoral George Soros or the, the moral George Soros? Uh, it's one person. It's one person who at one time engages in amoral activities and that the rest of the time tries to be moral. So here he is trying to use word magic to trick himself into the hypocrisy that he's living in where he says that he cares about the society that he lives in, but also he recognizes that his actions, well, he doesn't really worry about the outcome it has on the society around him. So I'm thinking, now this is a guy who went through a very traumatizing experience as a kid, which we'll get to. I'm thinking George Soros might actually have split personality disorder, folks. While hundreds of thousands of Hungarian Jews were being shipped off to the death camps, George Soros accompanied his phony godfather on his appointed rounds, confiscating property from the Jews. You're a Hungarian Jew mm -hmm. who escaped the Holocaust mm -hmm. by posing as a, a Christian. Right. Lots of people get shipped off to the death camps. Right. I was 14 years old. And I would say that that's when my character was made. In what way? That one should think ahead, one should understand and, and anticipate events. Uh, and uh, one, one is threatened. It was a tremendous threat of evil. I mean, it was a, a very personal experience of evil. So here he is justifying his actions as a teenager, um, going from being raised Jewish to being a turncoat and turning in Jews to the Nazis. But did you hear what he said there? This basically set the path for him the rest of the way. He said he realized that if you can get out ahead of something, you can take advantage of it. How sick is that? Hey, I realize that the Nazis are coming in here to round up the Jews. Well, I guess I'll collaborate with the Nazis because that'll benefit me in the long run. This is what we're seeing him still doing to this day, folks, fomenting civil unrest and then trying to leverage political power with people like the Clintons on the back end of it. I mean, that's, that sounds uh, like an experience that would send lots of people to the psychiatric couch for many, many years. Was it difficult? Uh, uh, not, not, not at all. Not at all. It, uh, maybe as a child, you don't, you don't see the connection. Uh, uh, but it, was, it created no, no problem at all. No feeling of guilt? No. So somehow he has no feeling of guilt for rounding up and turning in Jews during the Nazi reign of terror over the Jewish people. Wow. Of course, I, uh, I could be on the other side, or I could be the one from whom it, the thing is being taken away. If I weren't there, of course I wasn't doing it, but somebody else would, 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 would be taking it away anyhow. In other words, the, whether I was there or not, I was only a spectator, the property was being taken away. So I had no role in taking away that property. So I had no sense of guilt. Whether I or somebody else uh, does whatever is happening in the markets, it really doesn't make any difference to the outcome. I don't feel guilty because I'm engaged in an amoral activity which is not meant to have anything to do with guilt. So again, he's feeling no guilt for this at all. And this is something that would lead to you having a split personality disorder, where one side of you is being a traitor to your peers, but then the other side of you is trying to take advantage of that very thing while justifying it within your own social construct. So perhaps, you know, maybe George Soros really does have split personality, but regardless, he justifies working to round up Jews, basically collaborating with the Nazis, because, hey, everyone was doing it. Someone was going to do it anyway. I might as well get on board. This is the type of person funding Black Lives Matter and Democrats. Let's roll to the next one. Are you religious? No. 
Do you believe in God? No. Soros told us he believes God was created by man, not the other way around, which may be why he thinks he can smooth out the world's imperfections. So not religious, doesn't believe in God, but at the same time cares about the society around him. But why is that? I am basically there to, uh, to make money. I cannot and do not look at the social consequences of, of what I do. So that's what he's in this for, folks, money and power. Be because we are not registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission, we, 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 because we, we find it more convenient to operate without it. So in some ways it's to escape regulation. Yeah, that's right. But you've been sitting here talking about uh, the need for regulation. Yes, and whatever regulations are imposed, we will obey. We will. We will. We, we already confirm to every, uh, conform to everything. That's the nature of these people. Do as I say, not as I do. He's up here promoting all of these regulations, but at the same time, he's above them. Okay, this is the makeup of these people, folks. These are the people that are promoting all their agendas but expecting to be held to a different standard than the people they're imposing them on. And is giving away his billions now with the same determination that he made them in places like Haiti, a country that has less money in the bank than he does. Last month, he brought the first look lady at that for a witch. look at some of the projects. Look at the arrogant sway. Oh, my gosh. This is Mr. George Soros, and uh, he's going to be helping the hospital. Of course George Soros and Hillary Clinton were in Haiti in the 90s. And then at the end of it, what does Hillary say? Oh, George is here to help you guys build hospitals. How did that turn out? If the beneficiaries of Soros's billions do not understand the intricacies of SEC rules and offshore hedge funds, they do understand what he's done for them. The president of Haiti is reading his new book, The Crisis of Global Capitalism, and so is President Clinton. Will all the attention spoil George Soros? So that's right, folks. George Soros is here trying to claim how he's going to help Haiti. But the Haiti leaders, they don't really understand all of it. They can't really understand SEC this, uh, financial markets that. I don't really know. But what they do understand is they're getting rich. Clintons and the Soros still have millions and billions of dollars. But look at Haiti now. George Soros, in a way, is, uh, is Donald Trump without the humility. <laughs>